Hey, it's Soul with another video. This and every video is brought to you by our beloved sponsors. Consider being one so I can keep bringing you more of this and all things Warcraft and check out the Patreon link below. Patch 8.3 is all about holding your sanity long enough to beat back the forces of Nazoth, the old god. This guide is going to help you avoid uh, at least some confusion and keep your focus on working towards a powerful legendary cloak quickly and efficiently without putting in too much needless work. Unless you want to, of course, then I'll, I'll sort of guide you through that too. But first, why do you need a powerful legendary cloak? The cloak that's coming in 8.3 is one of the centerpieces of this patch. A powerful cloak will let you resist corruption, enabling you to wear more powerful pieces of corrupted gear without any negative consequences. It'll also allow you to survive visions and horrific visions for longer, which are challenges designed to reward your speed and skill with titles and cosmetics and of course bragging rights. To upgrade your cloak, you need to run these horrific visions. To run Horrific Visions, you need an item called a Vessel of Horrific Visions. To get this item, you need a currency called Coalescing Visions. I said visions a lot, and it's not my fault. But anyway, this guide will focus exclusively on how best to obtain this currency. Keep in mind though, of course, that this is the PTR. It's been changing values almost every build, so don't trust the numbers that I bring up in this video. I, I figure though that my estimates shouldn't be too far off from what goes live, but any big changes will be noted in the sticky comments below. As you begin the patch, you're going to go through a pretty lengthy starting quest line. After the introduction, the patch content is fully opened up. You're going to learn how corruption, visions, and sanity works, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But by now, you might have noticed that there is a lot to do. There's a lot going on here. So what is the best way to farm for visions? First though, let's start with this intro quest line. Like I said, it's long, notably because you're going to be doing everything that there is to do in this patch. Right now, there's this kind of, kind of sort of bug where doing your first round of dailies, world quests, and assaults does not award you any of these coalescing, uh, coalescing visions because technically you haven't progressed that far in the questline yet. So here's what you do. When you run into any of these dailies in Oldham or the Vale or in Visions, pick them up and complete the requirements but do not turn them in because you might see that the quest only rewards gold. This also includes the bonus chest that you get from completing the world quests. Just don't open the chest. Not yet. So after you build the gateway that lets you walk into these horrific visions, you can now turn in these dailies. You can open the boxes and so on. This is really important. If you open these boxes or turn in these quests beforehand, you can miss out on a lot of these coalescing visions. But you know, this might just be a bug and it's going to be fixed before this goes live. I just want to point out what I found so that if this does end up being in the patch, you're going to be kind of a step ahead of others who just blindly turn stuff in. Anyway, let's get to farming, folks. Here are the best and most reliable sources of coalescing visions. Basically, you should or you must do these. Complete the Old God Assault. This is a once a week thing that happens after each reset. Either Old Doom or the Veil of Eternal Blossoms will be under attack by the old gods themselves, so kill, maim, and complete objectives until this bar fills up. Then kill the genderless mob at the end and collect your massive reward, which is enough currency to buy a single run of a horrific vision. Next on the list is to complete the not old god assault, because that's going on at the same time too. These happen in the zone where the old gods are not present, so you'll end up fighting the likes of the Mogu, the Mantid, the Akir, or the Amethet. These assaults refresh on the first day of the raid week, and then it refreshes every three or so days, so that means that there's going to be a new assault just a day before reset. That would be Monday here on the US side, or, or Tuesday on the EU side. And the assault will once again change because the old god assault is going to change too. So definitely complete these. As of right now, completing all three assaults award enough coalescing visions that this gets you one and a half vision runs per raid reset. Also, each day the zone under attack from Nazoth will feature a vision of Nazoth, which is like this corrupted or infected version of Uldum or the Veil. It just depends on where it is. Standing next to the vision's entrance is an agent of Rathian who provides a daily. 
The daily at the moment awards a thousand coalescing visions, which is one tenth of a run. Completing this each day on top of the assault objectives will easily guarantee two runs of horrific visions per week. On top of that, you'll probably have picked up some extra visions while randomly killing rares, completing dailies, finding treasure uh, boxes, and looting mobs from visions. So if you want to limit your farming to just these activities, you're in a pretty good spot. Farming harder pays off, but don't ruin your schedule or neglect your alts if you don't feel the need to. The next level of farming will be to complete all of the dailies from both zones each day. The difficulty of these dailies vary from clicking stuff to killing a number of rares or even elites, so this is potentially really time consuming. But also keep in mind that turning these dailies in is a big contributor to fulfilling any of the assault objectives, so it might be worth doing these while those objectives are active, so you can get your questing done faster and then relax when no objectives are active that day. At the moment, completing all of the dailies in both zones will score you anywhere between uh, 350 to 400 visions per day, so it's a pretty good haul if you're trying to farm hard. I already brought up the visions in Old Doom and the Veil, but there are actually uh, kind of a few levels of farming to be done even here. Apart from just diving in and doing whatever the daily quest tells you to do, you can optionally try to last as long as you can in here and farm away. While in these visions, coalescing visions drop from mobs here, and there are corrupted chests that you can open up, although you do take some sanity damage. Chests, mobs, even rares, they also respawn here, so it's not just clear everything and go out, you can actually just, well, stay here. Research from the Titanic Research Archive only work in horrific visions, not these normal visions, but your cloak is fully functional. Even at lower levels, you can stay here for quite a while because of some helpful buffs that you can pick up in the vision, or there are external items like food that you can make that's also new to this patch. Visions are also a shared zone, so there could be a lot of people farming, including people that you want to invite into your group. The amount of currency that you can get here can easily equate to hundreds per hour or not, so it really depends on your mood and your desire to stay in this area. Finally, if you really want to squeeze out as many visions as you can, you can grind the outdoor content too. Throughout these two zones are your round of rares, treasure chests, and these optional side objectives marked with this icon here. It basically functions like a world quest. But the values from farming this outdoor content are pretty low on my list, unless you're also really interested in getting reputation, which is kind of worth it too. I mean, if you happen to be passing by and you see a bunch of people zerging on a massive rare, then hey, it's probably worth joining. And on top of coalescing visions, like I said, you can get rep from the objectives and some catch-up gear from the rares. The values here could change over the next couple of weeks, and this could be a lot more lucrative of a venture, but for now, I'm going to place this in like the hardcore farming category. Unless you're trying to go for world first at solo envisions, you shouldn't need to do much more than the big world objectives to get by. I admit, it's kind of a big shame because, well, I'm, I'm kind of telling you to ignore a lot of what these revamped zones have to offer, which is a reasonably challenging romp. But there are still a few weeks left until 8.3 goes live, and it's super easy to tweak these numbers around or add items to change the farming meta in a big way. Lastly, there is the actual use of this currency. As I mentioned earlier, there's only one thing to buy with these coalescing visions, and that's to buy these vessels to spend on runs. According to Wowhead, as well as my own research, you can speed your way to rank 5 of your cloak, that's 4 upgrades, in just like a day or two. You can do this easily by hopping into a vision and beelining straight to the boss, whether it's Thrall or Alaria. Most of the footage that you're seeing here is on an item level 400 character that I was able to do this with without too much pressure. But once you hit rank 5, your cloak will be able to handle going into deeper parts of the vision, and you'll also be asked to collect items that require you to go in anyway. All you have to do is complete the objectives in these corrupted or lost zones, and then once you leave, you'll find a big honking chest with your quest items inside. According to WoWhead though, these items have a maximum drop rate of twice per week so you only need to run, at most, two successful visions after reaching rank 5 on your cloak. It's going to be in your best interest to avoid doing more than two visions a week, so you can stock up for later. 
Because once your cloak reaches rank 15, you can continue upgrading your cloak to resist more corruption thanks to items that drop from successful horrific vision clears or Nazoth kills. We don't have enough information yet, but this is also when you'll be grinding for corrupted mementos, a currency that I haven't really mentioned yet, but it's, it's really important for surviving horrific visions and buying cool stuff. But I'm going to save that for my horrific vision guide, which will be out later. That's about it, and I hope that this little lesson on visions and cloak farming will be helpful. And if it was, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel for more of this, and a basic guide through horrific visions and all things Warcraft. I'll see you later. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Thank you.